The first kind of append-only model that we're going to look at is an event source. Event sourcing is the practice of storing a history of events rather than a static model and then calculating the current state of the model from those events. The advantages of doing this is, first of all, it becomes a natural audit log. We have this entire history of everything that has happened in the system, and we can rely upon this history because we're using it in order to determine the current state. There's no way for the current state and the history to get out of sync. And then the second benefit of it has to do with integration. When we're integrating with another system, we'll usually want to send it the events that have occurred in the past. So the way that we've seen that before with an enterprise service bus is to publish those events to all of the subscribers. But one of the problems that we ran into while publishing events to subscribers is that the subscribers would only receive events from the point that they subscribed onward. We would have to feed and then seed the data underneath the subscription in order to make sure that they had a full history. But if the full history is already in the event source, then there's no need to feed and seed. You can simply go grab that history from the event source. The third benefit has to do with error correction. When you have an entire history of all of the things that have occurred in your application, it's very easy to go back and spot any sort of errors that have occurred. When you notice some kind of anomaly, you can backtrack everything that has happened to that particular object in order to figure out what caused that anomaly. Once you fix your code, you don't have to recalculate the current state based on the fix because you'll have all of the source data to just recalculate the current state from history. And so you get automatic error correction. And then the final benefit is temporal decoupling. We can enter these events into the database at a time different from the date that they've become effective. So we can post-date or even predate these events. And then if our calculation of current state includes the effective date, then those events take effect at exactly the time that they're supposed to. So let's go ahead and see how we can apply event sourcing to the fulfillment system. The next thing that I need to do is to change this inventory allocation service so that it's no longer using this static inventory table, but instead gets its inventory from the history of events. So the first thing that I want to do in this is to calculate the inventory levels. And this is going to be for each warehouse. So from warehouse in the warehouse repository, I want to select a new anonymous class. And so this is going to preserve the warehouse. But now I want to calculate the quantity of inventory that I have currently allocated. So the quantity allocated, and that's going to be the sum of all of my pick lists. So let me get the warehouse dot pick lists. And I want just the ones where the pick list is for the product that I'm ordering. And then go ahead and take the sum of the quantities. So there's my quantity allocated. And then next I want to get the quantity that I have restocked. And so the quantity restocked is based on, remember, the requisitions. So I first have to place a requisition before I can receive the product and restock it. So these are all the requisitions for the requested product. And then furthermore, I want only the requisitions that have actually been restocked. So if I don't have a restock record, then that means I have requisitioned it, but I haven't received it and put it into inventory. So it's not available to fulfill orders. So now I've only got the ones that are restocked, and then I can take the sum 
of their quantities. Now there's a uh, a little thing about uh, SQL Server that it doesn't understand that the sum of an empty set of numbers is zero. It thinks that that sum is null. So I have to say that if you get back a null, give me back a zero. But C Sharp is telling me that I can't use this operator if I don't have a nullable type on this side. So to make C Sharp happy, we're going to cast this to a nullable int. And so this way, if I don't have any pick lists, or if I don't have any requisitions that have been restocked, then I won't get back null here, I'll get back a zero. And now that I've got those quantities, I can actually determine which warehouse has sufficient quantity. So let me return from the inventory levels. I want the one where the quantity that has been restocked minus the quantity that has been allocated is greater than or equal to the quantity that I desire. So this is the calculation that is determining the quantity available. So it's those that I have actually received into the warehouse minus those that I have allocated to other orders. I might not have shipped them yet, but they are allocated to another order, so they're not available. So from those, I'm going to select the warehouse. And now I'm only interested in one, so let me get first or default. So this first part here, it's just setting up a query. There's nothing here at the end that tells it to actually execute that query. This is just giving us back an I queryable. So this result is not fully realized at this point. It's then used to further refine and select a specific result. And then once I do this first or default, that query is sent to SQL Server and executed there. So the only thing that comes back from SQL Server is the one warehouse that I'm interested in picking from. So that means that this query that was based on the inventory static table has become this query that is based on the history of events. But we're not quite finished. The next thing that this service was doing is actually picking the product. And so that means that it had to find the inventory and adjust the quantity on hand. Well, we're no longer keeping track of the inventory in this kind of record, so we can eliminate this part. And now all that's left is that it is creating the pick list, which will by, uh, eventually, by the caller, be put into the database. So if we're putting this pick list into the database, then the next time we run this query, it will be included in this result. So the quantity allocated will be greater. And that means that this value, the quantity available, will be lower. And so that has the desired result. By simply putting a new event into the database, it's going to recalculate all of the dependent properties. And this is an example of event sourcing.